Hey, what's going on, Capstone fam? Uh, welcome to the Cribs episode. We're gonna go around and look at uh, some of our volunteers, and since we're on quarantine and we haven't seen each other, I thought it'd be fun just to kind of show spots around our house that we enjoy. So I'm obviously in our garage, and uh, wide variety of wood. We've got these tools, saws, other saws, kits, everything. These are my skateboards. Uh, do some art with those. Uh, and then built that guy today. Built this a while ago. And happy spot as well as all of our snowboards. So I do have a collection, a few of those are stairs, being two of them. Um, but that's, uh, this is our happy, my happy spot. So. Uh, this is my favorite spot in my house because I decorated it. And I really like plants, and this is my favorite plant, Tisa monstera deliciosa. I think that's how you pronounce it. Or a split like philodendron. And he's growing a new little thing right there. And um, so where I take my selfies for the gram, <laughs> check my outfit. And this is my um, string of hearts plant. He doesn't really like it right now because it's like not summertime, so he's a little dry. And this guy has barely survived winter, but he's hanging on. <laughs> so, that is all. Cribs. Cribs, baby. Back to you by Carlucci. Carlucci. Uh, Chimpo asked us to share our favorite spot in our house. Um, we have a trailer right now, so we awesome. you were taking you around um, part of our trailer, because this is basically where we spend a lot of our time. Um, so here we have, you know, just our kitchen. Um, we do a lot of cooking up in Hizzle. And we got a little couch area over there. And then, oh, you flip this thing around. I sound like an old person. Um, this is where we eat. And that's about it. Do cards. We skippo. play a lot of Skippo. And then we see the moo moos. And the moo moos are out there. Can Hi, you see them? Oops, which way did I There's go? There's some baby moo moos right there. There's baby cows out there. We've been cow. watching them. See? Nope, can't see them. Right there. Right there. Baby cows. And that's um, how we spend our time right now. Anywho, miss you all. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Here we are. Don't Let's don't go. do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome guys. I appreciate you taking the time and joining Capstone on YouTube. Uh, this is uh, Josh Stock, International Director and Director hey. of the United States of Great America. It is Randy Schroeder. Hey, thanks for having us. Give a brief introduction of yourself uh, for those watching. I'm the U.S. National Director for Snowboarders and Skiers for Christ, and I live down the hill in near Denver, Colorado. I've lived here for about 10 years, and so I've been working with Josh here at Snowboarders and Skiers for Christ for about 10 years, and it's, um, it's been a wild ride. Wild indeed. <laughs> I'm Josh Stock. I live at Copper Mountain in Colorado with my wife and two littles. I've got a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. Gosh, you just turned three. And uh, yeah, I've been involved with this weird organization, Snowboarders and Skiers for Christ, full-time for about 13 years, I think, and uh, a handful of years before that, too. So, And I'm the international team captain, we call me. I'm, I don't like the idea of a, being a director because it feels a lot of top down and, and what we do with the organization, we call it a support office. And we're just trying to support all these people who are these Jesus loving ski skiers and snowboarders 
um, all around the world, whether they call themselves. Kind of just uh, a brief origin of, of this nonprofit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there are some similar nonprofits to ours, uh, different ministries like Christian Surfers, Christian Skaters. Um, um, and originally, our organization started when a bunch of guys who were working with Christian Surfers in New Zealand, um, they were young, like teenage, and they, they were like, man, this is great. Christian Surfers is cool. Like, we can go surf. And meet our buddies out on out in in the lineup and stuff but um somebody needs to do this with snowboarding too because snowboarding is a it's a weird seasonal like real dark culture and somebody needs to do something about this and so these teenage kids just young young bucks who um recognize this need um stepped up to the plate and the local christian servers guys were like yeah dude go grommets like go go get after it and so they sent these kids out and, and um, after a couple of years, it really built steam and other people in different places were going, yeah, yeah, we had the same vision. Um, and it sort of grew from there through uh, youth with a mission that was happening there in New Zealand, it spread globally. And then <clears throat> we got involved. I personally got involved early 2000s, 2002. I spent a season in Japan, um, but I had the same vision. I was just a kid from a, local tiny little ski hill like one of these ski hills in Pennsylvania you know it's like 30 seconds down the hill 30 minutes in the lift line back in um, 2002 I ended up in Japan and uh, worked with those guys the founders um, there we were working with a, a Japanese dude working in a local tiny little ski resort community trying to build a hospital and trying to learn how to minister to this small Japanese community we were teaching English lessons we were teaching snowboard lessons we were I mean renovating this place knocking out walls and cleaning toilets and just sort of everything learning how how does this community how do we minister to this community in their context and that to me was like man that's really cool because this town I was living in in Japan did not look like the town where I lived in outside of Pittsburgh and then did not look like the town I moved to here in Colorado um, it was a cool way to see how Christians, even skiers and snowboarders, who we feel kind of similar, but how they do ministry uniquely in their own context based on where they are and based on what needs God's shown them. And so we moved here to Colorado 2004 and said, oh, let's try this for a year or two and see what God's doing. And I'd studied missions. I thought I was going to go overseas. I, I thought this was a, a temporary thing. I actually told my buddy, I said, I'll help you for like a year or two do this snowboarding ministry thing, whatever. But then I'm going to go do real missions somewhere, you know, like, because I thought mission was, you know, I grew up here and mission was go to this tribal African, you know, context. And, and, and I quickly learned being here for a couple months, I was like, oh, wow, it's, there's a weird subculture here that has its own language it has its own customs its own i mean you wear this thing and you're a kook you're left out or you wear this thing and you're really cool like there's like an in and out there's a weird culture here that um missions totally applies like you can speak learn to speak their language you can learn to find their customs and then challenge their culture with the gospel same way jesus did you know he got in and amongst it was in and about the culture but was constantly challenged them. The culture needs to step up. You've heard it said this, but like, I'm going to challenge you. The culture could be redeemed. We, we really feel like we can redeem this culture, not change it so that it's not what it is, like not unique anymore, but change it so that it's redeemed. The same, the same way God redeems us is the same way he can redeem this culture. And so that started, gosh, whatever, 15, 16 years ago. Now I've been here in this, in this same community minister and working with churches and, minister on the hill and so now there's about 50 groups around the world that are doing it in spots and josh travels all over to tell people about jesus and encourage other people to do the same someone will reach out and say man i really like to know what this looks like in my context and so. thing that you guys are doing with bridging and, and maybe i don't know randy or josh is on this topic but i would love you guys have done it for two years now called the secret, secret spot challenge kind of give some of our context to that and, and what that bridge is and the mission you're doing there for uh summit and, and colorado in general let me i'll i'll start on it josh and then when i say it wrong you can <laughs> you can jump in um 
Yeah, the idea started a couple of years ago. Uh, one of the guys on our team, Nick, started looking around for different um, ways that we could just make a kind of a practical difference in our area through an event. And so we partnered with two local nonprofits. And one is a faith-based nonprofit that does peer support groups, and they're called My Quiet Cave. And then the other side is a non-faith-based nonprofit that connects mental health resources around Summit County. And so it's kind of this cool partnership of um, a faith-based organization, ourselves, who don't even really work in the mental health space. But I mean, if you have friends and you love Jesus, then you do work in the mental health space. And then this non-health or non-faith-based um, mental health organization all coming together and teaming up. And so it's an on-hill challenge to, we say, search out the secret spots. And if you can ski a blue, it's for you. And so there's, in the ski and snowboard culture, um, oftentimes on a powder day, there will be these secret spots on the mountain that, you know, has that powder a little bit extra long that you might not share immediately with, you know, the people around you so that you can kind of keep the, your secret stash to, to yourself. And um, it's just like that we find in our own lives that we, there are these secret spots that um, might be kind of dark corners of our lives that uh, it turns out just like skiing and snowboarding, it's actually better if you share it with a friend and it's in in life it's actually better if you take these these dark corners these thoughts these feelings that you might not feel like it's safe to share and it's actually better if if you find someone um that you love that loves you to share uh, about some of these dark thoughts if you're um thinking about taking your own life or if it's just um you're just really bummed out and you're not sure who to talk to or if somebody cares um and so we want to give people practical practical resources to um, learn to share that and who to share it with and know that you're not alone on it. Dude, now you said it just perfectly. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Laid out the truth. I wanna, I wanna empower you. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. I, I don't know if we said this, but specifically in the ski snowboard culture, um, there is a really big mental health crisis. Um, here in Summit, there's three times the national average of suicides. Um, and so for us, it was like, this is a need that's in our community that needs addressing. Somebody needs to, to say something about this. And even though we're not mental health professionals, um, we, can, we can make a difference. We can step up and bring in the professionals, start to unite people and, uh, and talk about it. And so we go out and engage them right where they are in their element. And we, we do it that way. Some of our high schoolers may be watching and really with the world wide web that we put this on, we want to be able to touch upon another fun element you guys are doing with uh, building up this concept of discipleship and your guys' school, you know, a discipleship program that you're, you're offering. Thanks for asking, Josh. Why don't you tell the folks about that? <laughs> <laughs> don't mind if I do. Um, one of the guys that's on our staff is, uh, I know we should have got he's lead. just, we should have got him in on this. He's just an educator. He loves, he's always got his nose in a book if he's not on a snowboard. And, uh, and so we started talking to him a couple years ago. And we said, man, we just need some training stuff. We need to, we have, currently we have around 500 volunteers across the world. And we need some way to start training people. And so we have a, we have a residential one that we, he started, uh, this is our second year of it. It's six month. Um, training they come out here to Colorado and and sit under under his teaching and and um and so we've done that the last two years um but it feels like the way things are going it feels like everything's sort of morphing more towards this virtual training model and so we're doing we're talking about doing podcasts and we're literally right in the middle of taking a survey um of all these leaders saying what how could we encourage you how could we train you how could we support you um, how could we build you up, especially as this thing is happening, things are getting all crazy and everything's virtual. I've been on calls all day, Zoom calls yeah. all day. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I got a little guy here. <laughs> and people are like, Snow Shredder, this guy is, you know, uh, from Liberty University, mm. uh, you know, master's degree. Masters, yeah. Master. He's a master of the Bible. He's a master. He's a master of the he's Bible. All, but if you see him on a snowboard, too, though, dude, he's a master oh, of the snowboard, too. He rips. True. I remember, yeah. <laughs> I remember at our yeah, conference a few years just doing, yeah, crazy, crazy slides on the rail, pretzel in, pretzel out. Yeah, if you want an adventure in action sports ministry, whether it's for a season or for longer than that, um, 
whether it's, you know, I don't know if you recommend Timberline from Torch Bears that you did, Aaron, is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, there's awesome opportunities throughout um, New England. There's cool residential programs too. And so if that's something, um, I think, Aaron, you're actually a really good resource to help plug people in with what would be a right fit to them. So, um, yeah, we're actually going to have, in your, in your high school. have Dan Thomas uh, come on and, and give a nice tour on Torch Bears. So, that's very awesome. cool. So, yeah, I mean, if you're in high school and you're trying to figure out what's next, I would say just encourage you that you've got an amazing resource sitting right in front of you. Aaron has got um, a lot of really awesome places to get you plugged in with a, a cool adventure to grow deeper with Jesus and uh, deeper with passion, whether that's snowboarding or um, whatever that might be for you. Yeah. Randy, <laughs> you're, you're a builder, construction type. So I'm asking guests, we're from the Evergreen State. So we got trees galore out here in the Pacific Northwest. And a question is towards you is, you know, if you were going to be a tree, you know, any type of tree, what tree would you be and why would you choose that tree? Mm. Oh, man. You're, you're once, at first, you're most beautiful in the fall. You know, you kind of like, you're this unsung hero. It's like kind of regular tree throughout the year. But then once a year, you shine brightly in the fall. And then you come full circle to spring and you're quite useful you're sweet you're delicious the children will drink your sap it's man it's it's quite the tree, what tree, yeah, which tree? maple uh, maple, maple okay we, we didn't hear the first part yeah maple, okay. oh man without you couldn't have guessed from the from the uh colorful description once you got to the once you got to the sap i, the I said sap was, <laughs> and they're a dead, it, like dead giveaway <laughs> Because Shrugs is the, the Minnesota, the land of many lakes. <laughs> you betcha. Gone through you betcha, place. don't you know? You betcha. So, <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, the Snowboard the Youth for Christ. Um, love the ministry. Now there's faces to, as I wear my stuff around the church and have my snowboards in my office. Um, well, we're definitely, we're stoked to have Nick out here. And um, there's some good representation, and we're trying to get it on the west side and even partner with the Canadians up there just past the border that's shut down that we can't visit. So <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be there this week, actually. Oh, I was supposed to, supposed to be up there all week, but the Rona. Guys, we want to thank you for watching. We want to thank our volunteers for showing us a glimpse of their homes. Randy and Josh for sharing about snowboarders and skiers for Christ, a ministry that's very close to my heart through the years of college and doing life with those guys. Um, it's our hope that you would be able to, if you have an interest in snowboarding and skiing, or even just in missions in general, like Josh said, go to their website at sfcusa.org and be able to see just what they're doing further with these time travels and their discipleship program and trainings, or just to be connected with other believers who are skiers and snowboarders. We're a family. And what we're realizing in this time is that the church is truly not the walls, that we are the church, that we continue, even with government shutdowns of, of mass capacity, that we as a church are more connected now through some of this technology. Our light is being shown as well. You know, as snowboarders and skiers of Christ, we have this emblem of the lantern. You see, in Luke 8, verse 16, no one after lighting a lamp covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. Church and friends watching, we want to be encouragement. We want our light to be con continually revealed. For where there is light, there is no darkness. Even the smallest glimmer of light cancels out that darkness. That is a truth that we all can understand in this world. And so right now, when you're with your neighbors or out shopping at groceries, I know you maintain a six feet, but even six feet, you can be able to share that gospel message. You could be able to share a message of hope, a message of truth to those that need that. Tonight's music is from Blake and Caitlin. They're gonna be performing Light Up the Sky for us all. We, we love you guys. We love Capstone. We love you, Camino Chapel family. We're praying for you in this Easter week, and we can't wait to rejoice in the, the great celebration that is Easter, that He has risen. He has risen indeed.